Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to listen up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. Phil and Ryan, listen up. Ryan, August the 1st. And you know what that means? It's just that much closer until November. Of course, we have some game action coming in this month. But today's a very special day, Ryan, because it's the grand finale of this series what everybody has been waiting for. Ryan, say no more. I don't think there there's any words for today, how special today is. Ryan, you tell us why today is so special. Yeah, series finale of the episode, and of course she is back. It's the, it's the one and only Paige Beckers making her return. There we go! How do you <laughs> like it? <laughs> Hey, man, you're right. And it's that much closer to November until we see clutch plays, clutch highlights just like that. Iconic pictures, right, on ESPN morning shows that we're waking up to. Ryan, uh, just very quickly, I did catch catch some um, uh, short messages in our uh, mailbag earlier this morning and last night. And for the first time in a while, they said, where is Ryan? So here he is, right here, sitting beside of me. I just want to appreciate all your hard work. And, man, uh, not only am I lucky, but all of you guys are lucky to have Ryan on this podcast. Ryan, the knowledge you provide and the opinions you provide us are like no other. So, again, thank you for coming on with us. And, Ryan, again, August the 1st. What else can I say to you, Ryan? I mean, this is really it. I mean, there's two two words, Paige Beckers. Ryan, she was named the best college athlete in women's sports at the 2021 ESPYs. Uh, Ryan, we witnessed uh, her set the UConn single game assist record um, at Butler her freshman season. She holds a record for assist, I believe, 168. She just, again, when she stepped on the scene – we, you and I were introduced to this name and this iconic player when it all, when did it start? It was at, it was the page. I'll go way back when it was the page, the ESPN alert that we had against back then it was number one, South Carolina. And that's when UConn defeated, I believe they defeated South Carolina in that game. Her first, maybe I believe one of her first games as a Husky, uh, Ryan, I mean, you, you might as well take it over on this Tuesday morning. I, I don't know what else to say. This is it. This is it. Because, it, again, I, I'm not going to change uh, just because of what happened last season. It's not totally because of that. Ryan, here's my words to you. And then it's the spotlight's on you and Paige Beckers. How about that? I'll tell you what. Again, I don't see them bringing back a championship in this Paige Beckers era without – Paige Beckers on the floor. That's it. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of uh, interesting topics when when talking about Paige Beckers. And, and uh, amongst one of them is, of course, the championship talk. And, you know, are the UConn Huskies going to win a championship with Paige Beckers? Hopefully she does decide to stay after the season. Of course, only having one season under her belt after missing all of last year. Uh, unfortunately. So uh, with the return of her this year, I, I think there's really high expectations. I think uh, there's a lot of lot of expectations for UConn this year uh, for winning a championship. And I think the team obviously didn't look the same without Paige and definitely in terms of offense. I think UConn lost a lot of offense last year. Luckily, finding a diamond in the rough with Lou Lopez, Seneschal, Luckily, she did make up for a lot of that lost offense. But I think it was very obvious uh, and during the March Madness run w without Paige Beckers. Uh, they survived during the, the regular season, the Big East tournament. But, but I think once UConn made it to March Madness, it was very uh, obvious then that Paige Beckers is, is definitely needed, uh, especially for the, the postseason championship run. So... Uh, hopefully, you know, same goes to all the players. But obviously, if, if she can remain healthy for the entire season, Paige Beckers is definitely going to be 
in the starting lineup for each and every game. And definitely the offense will receive a huge boost. And I think not only for Paige Becker scoring a lot of points, but, you know, AC did a, a, a great job last year uh, scoring a lot of points and providing offense, but, uh, or before she got injured. But I think with the return of Paige Beckers, it, it opens the, the floodgates, if you will, on offense for other players like AC Fudd, Caroline Ducharme, uh, and, and a couple other of the guards that, that will receive minutes, hopefully off the bench, um, with Paige Beckers on the floor. Because I, I think, obviously, Paige will draw a lot of attention on offense. So I, I think it opens the floor up a little bit more for specifically Caroline and AZ to uh, score score a couple more points and, and provide an, an a more all-around offensive attack for this team. Um, and maybe even Nika Mule as well can find some of that offense with a little bit of the pressure off of her. So, um, you know, there's just so many things with Paige Becker is coming back that this team is going to be able to do that they couldn't do without her last season. So I'm just very excited to obviously see everybody back in action. But, you know, not being able to see Paige Becker is on the floor for an entire season was definitely disappointing. So, uh, I think, obviously, everybody is definitely excited to see her back this year. Yeah, unanimous first-team All-American. Again, Paige Beckers. Ryan, when you talk about best-case and worst-case scenarios, um, again, this is all talk, right? Um, and you and I are guilty of it. I mean, we talk. That's what we do, a podcast, right? Uh, but, again, we heard what Gino earlier, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Gino earlier in the all-season, he stated what something about – uh, she's been uh, uh, practicing, looking very good in practice, right? Uh, um, putting in a lot of work. Um, again, here's in three weeks ago an article from uh, Credit Sports Illustrated. Paige Becker's feeling really good as ACL recovery continues. With that said, Ryan, again, that's that's talk. We understand that. Now that's good news, right? That's very good news. We don't want to yeah. hear. We don't want to hear. All right, Paige Becker's. Uh, most likely to miss half of the season or, or you know, Paige Beckers is not recovering well from, from her injury. No, we don't want to hear that. So this is all good news. But with that said, Ryan, you understand just as well as I do, that's talk. When you break it down and, and actually focus on what is going to happen on the court and predict, what best case scenario for me, arguably National Player of the Year. Worst case scenario, let's not get into injury. I don't even want to discuss that uh, because there's a lot of talent from her that we have not seen because of injury, unfortunately. What's, even though people don't want to hear it, I know we might sometimes have to get into this side of conversation, Ryan. What's best case and worst case scenarios? Yeah, I, I think the best case scenario is that she has a season like she did when she first arrived on the scene for freshman year, did mm -hmm. win uh, the player of the year, freshman of the year. Uh, so I, I think the best case is having that type of season again. And mm -hmm. I think also one of the big questions is uh, that can Paige, you know, play like that again after this injury? Because obviously nobody has seen her in full game live action post injury. So it should be interesting to see the first couple games kind of, uh, what her pace is like, what her energy is like, um, you know, is she able to keep up with the, the pace uh, of a live action game? So uh, obviously, you know, I, I believe she she will be able to. She's had a lot of time to recover. Uh, hopefully, you know, everything's going good. And, and the, the news is correct that we've been hearing all off season. Uh, but I, I think the worst case, I, I think, is. Uh, and no, don't say can, injury. That's not. <laughs> That can no, be an answer. No, I, I'm done talking about injuries yeah. for a while. Uh, but I, I think kind of piggybacking off of that is that if Paige isn't able to keep up with the pace of the game and, and just kind of seems uh, out of tune with the offense a little bit. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think it, it might take her a couple games maybe, or it might not. Maybe the first game of the season she scores about 30 points, which is obviously Ooh, a good possibility. I love it. So, uh, uh, I, I think that definitely is a good possibility that she just comes out firing the first game and uh, is firing on absolutely all cylinders.
Wouldn't it be lovely to put her picture on that first th thumbnail of the season opening game? Oh, my goodness. You have me so hungry right now for popcorn and Connor's Cheetos, everything that's good. Uh, Ryan, hey, shout out very quickly to how about Dorka Juhas, our old friend Dorka Juhas. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what kind of show has she been putting on? And then Minnesota Link in the W. But, hey, we wish we could stay with you guys for hours on end. We will be back this week, I promise. Ryan, let's get into some comments very quickly, and then, let, and then let's head on out. My name is Jason, and I approve everything that was said in this podcast. <laughs> Forgive me, fellas. I'm on vacation this week, and I might miss a couple episodes. As a web developer, it is important for me to unplug from the matrix every now and then so I don't lose my mind. I'll see you in a week or so. Please be safe and keep up the great work. Peace. Yeah, we definitely appreciate it as always, Jason, and definitely enjoy your vacation. Uh, we'll be okay without you commenting for the, the next episodes or so. We, I think we can survive without you for a couple episodes but not for too long no how not, about not, uh, the disruptive one no i look at this trip as an opportunity for arnold patterson samuel and brady to look good in actual games and maybe get a look for playing time early in the season and ryan that's in reference to the yukon huskies european tour yeah definitely i think i think it's gonna be uh, a lot of information taken in, like I, like I mentioned in that episode, for for all the coaches, especially Gino. Uh, I think with, with all the players that are expected to play, I think freshman, sophomore uh, are, are the big two groups that uh, are going to get a lot of minutes during this tournament. And I think depending on how they play, I think it's definitely a good possibility that it does determine – how many minutes they get to start off the season and, and how they perform during this trip. Um, you know, since it is obviously not games that count, but it is going to be live action games going full pace. So I think it is kind of going to be a, a good telling sign of, of how uh, some of these players are going to look to to begin the regular season. Paul 15 goes, is Jana out for the year? I heard four to six months. Could she play at the end or not? You know, Ryan, uh, very quickly, it's interesting because I've seen it before, miracle storylines, and we love it as long as the athlete does not get re-injured. There's always that uh, side of me, unless it's like just an absolutely just downright terrible injury. I, I don't even know what to say as far as that. But just, just as far as – to sticking on topic here and uh, you know injuries that are to you i mean like a broken leg or something i mean we this is not that but what i'm trying to tell you is i to certain injuries you know i hold it's weird because i've seen it before i've witnessed it in the nfl um i guess you go through all basketball baseball whatever you want to say i i've seen before not too many times but whether it's college professional there have been times where athletes have been ruled out the whole season but yet the end of the season comes and here they are live in game action. Yeah. And, and it's obviously not to this extreme, but, but even DeMar Hamlin in the NFL, I mean, a lot of people uh, thought that he'd uh, never uh. see the field again. And he's expected to play uh, at the start of the season, I believe, but obviously to not that extreme, but in Jonna's case, unfortunately she is, uh, you know, the, the, all the headlines say that she is, expected to be out for the season but that would be great if she would be available at the end end of the regular season possibly but uh i i just don't think any of the coaches uh on the yukon huskies roster want to take the chance of, of her rushing rushing back to the court and possibly making the injury even worse and then missing uh time at the beginning of the next season possibly so hopefully she can uh focus on you know during the this regular season uh, and during the next off season recovering like Paige Beckers did. Uh, and I think, you know, maybe Paige can help her with her rehabilitation and, and all the process, everything that comes along with that. So hoping for the best for Jana to uh, recover fully during uh, all this time. And hopefully she can, she can get back to looking the same uh, after this injury. That's it. It was a pleasure, Ryan. And uh, we've reached the end mark. And uh, up next, I guess, 
uh, it will be a coaches. Maybe again, we want to definitely cover the uh, former UConn Huskies that have gone into the WNBA. So hold tight, guys, for those those episodes uh, about to be released. And then Ryan, uh, like you said, we will go over the full coaching staff right here on Listen Up. And are you ready to end this series on one last high note? There you go, one more <laughs> time. All right, now that Ryan, this is this is. Not just for Yukon Nation up north, right? This is for the whole United States. How about the whole world? Why don't we say the whole world? Here it is. One last time, Ryan. It is all about, this is all about Paige Beckers and the Yukon Huskies. All right? Phil and Rye on Listen Up.